people who are being oppressed come to these lands and become colonizers, are colonizers here. And so we see this as a theme that happens a lot, is that there is um, a system of above and below that the oppressed, the one option that they have to survive is to either flee, and now today, where do we flee to, right? That's a really important question. Maroonage, that the black radical tradition teaches us a lot about. You either flee, and if you don't flee, then you need to assimilate into the above. You need to become above. And so you need to shift context somehow where now you're no longer below and you're above. And that's what happened with a lot of people who have been oppressed in Europe, whether it's Jews, whether it's Muslims, whether it's peasants who were forced off of their lands as capitalism was growing and privatizing land. Land that had not been private before became privatized. And people who had worked the land before, peasants, were forced to become factory workers, were forced to become workers, waged workers, proletari the proletariat. And so what Europe did and has done and continues to do is export its contradictions out. It has a lot of contradictions internally, Europe does, and it likes to export them out. And one of them is violence. So people who were resisting being dispossessed of the land, well, why don't you go find some land in those colonies over there, right? Is what the imperial powers would tell them or what their own powers would tell them. And they would, and they would find their freedom by subjugating others, by stealing from others, by destroying others, by enslaving others. We get both genocide and enslavement. You get both erasure, genocide, and dehumanization, enslavement. We get that, we see that in 1492, erasure and dehumanization of Muslims and Jews that now we don't hardly even know this history, that there was Muslims in Spain, that there was Jews in Spain, we hardly know. In school, we hardly get taught this. And then of course the erasure and dehumanization of the native indigenous peoples on Avia Yala on these lands and our African relatives who were kidnapped and forced to be enslaved. 1492 leads to this. This is a peaceful agreement between Europeans. It's so that the Europeans do not fight. This is a border, not for the people or communities on the ground. It's for those who are going to rule from above as if they're God and they can cut up the world and give it out as a piece of property, as an object. So this is where I, I, I like to start the story of the borders of Palestine here. The borders of, of, of any geography that we live in starts here and with January 2nd, 1492, because it's not just borders, it's borders. The borders exist for the above. They're agreements for the above. This was an agreement for the Catholic monarchs with the Pope for the above so that the above doesn't fight but they build their world, this world of 1492, they build it off the backs of the below. They build it by crushing the below. Their foundation is the below. Europe, non-Europe. In order for Europe to create itself, it had to, because this is it, the cosmovision that it, it follows, it had to dehumanize others, it had to understand itself as the positive to the negative of others. So everyone is negated. And so, so for example, white is made superior, black is made inferior, Europe is made superior, non-Europe inferior. So it's above and below, superior, inferior. And the above makes their lives at the expense of the below. So these borders, these borders exist for the above. International law exists for the above. It does not exist for Palestinians. It does not exist for us. It exists for agreements for the above and those who the above allows in 
or those who allow themselves in with nuclear weapons. This is why a lot of states want to have nuclear weapons so that another nuclear power doesn't attack them. It's a deterrence device. See how messed up this all is? You see what world we're living in? This is where we're at 500 years later. 